Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Pillai's live global light body forum. Today, Dr. Pillai will be joined by physicians, healers, spiritual teachers, and seekers from around the world for a discussion about the light body as a practical solution to both personal and global peace and evolution. So if you're anything like me, you may feel that the light body is a mysterious and even incomprehensible topic and concept which is precisely why we're having this conversation. We are going to be exploring the different perspectives of how the light body is viewed, everything from the religious standpoint on how the light body is present in religions around the world, to science and how there is proof of turning matter into light. And then finally, we'll be talking about with some folks on their personal experiences by using light body techniques. So now we are being joined by Dr. Ply. Thank you so much, Dr. Ply, for joining us on this discussion today. Dr. Ply is a world thought leader, and he is an expert in the topic of the light body. Could you please begin by telling us about this concept and uh, some of the beings that you know of and have experienced the light body? Thank you. Thanks particularly to the Divine for turning on my language mind. I have to get into my language brain in order to talk to you. Otherwise, I'll be completely spaced out. I'll give you an example. I was... Uh, somebody was driving me here because I can't drive. <clears throat> um, and then they stopped at a place and I looked around and then there was a church and the church was God's church. And down below was written something like the place for uh, refuge, the place for refuge. And then um, I have been in the process uh, during the time to activate my language brain and then my language brain was telling, what if the uh, word refuge is changed with a replacing S by with a, in the place of G, the place for refuse. So the meaning changes completely. So it becomes a place for garbage. So that is the trick that language plays. So we do not know what's happening to us. That's why we have to evolve. And we are all so complacent. But there are, there are layers of consciousness. That when you move on into those levels of consciousness, there will be infinite freedom. The language brain is not the best brain. The best brain is the non-language one, where you are silent and you will know everything. I'll give you an example. And spiritual people will know who J. Krishnamurti is. He passed away. And uh, while he was alive, he visited uh, Indra Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India. And J. Krishnamurti was friends with her father, uh, Pandit Nehru, who was the first Prime Minister. So they have been uh, family friends. Just a few days before she was shot dead by her own bodyguard, Krishnamurti met her in Delhi and asked her, in a casual conversation he had with her. Do you believe in your bodyguard? She said, I can't believe anyone. Two days later or three days later, she was shot dead by her own bodyguard. And how did Krishnamurti, who was an atheist, a renegade, who never believed in religion, never believed in God, never believed in tradition, 
but believed in consciousness. How did he know ahead of time that she was going to be shot dead by her own bodyguard? But he didn't tell her because he knew that was not right for him to do at that point, but then he hinted that. That is the non-language brain. So I prefer to be in that brain where I could perform a lot, contribute a lot doing that. But then I need the language brain too. That's why I came here. Otherwise I could be in an invisible world. But I can't do an interaction with you unless I have a body here and then I talk to you. So the language brain has to be brought in and then, so that's why I thanked the Divine in me for activating the language brain so that I could talk to you. The discussion is on light body. It is not a concept that is uh, esoteric. It is a very practical concept. Because the light body is our real body. The meat body of flesh and blood is an illusion. Just as you are particles is the real is the reality. But you don't see the particles, you will only you only see the diseases in the body and your body which is thin or heavy or beautiful or ugly, you are just concerned about this body, but not seeing the reality. The light body is really the reality that we are seeing the unreality and calling it this unreality as reality. We are seeing only the illusion. We have to move from this illusion of matter to pure energy, which is the reality. That is what the light body is about. So it's not an esoteric concept just for the New Age people. It is a concept that is practical. It has been there in all world religions. But unfortunately, religion gets misunderstood. All religions go have this same destiny of being misunderstood. Look at the, the largest religion of the world, Christianity, thanks to Christ. That he changed the entire world. Nobody changed the world as did Christ. Christianity became the world number one religion of the world. Not any other religion. And what is his main teaching? Look at Paul, his, his representative. And he clearly made uh, statements to the light body. He said, you are all waiting for the kingdom. And he said, this corruption, meaning this flesh and bl blood body, will not inherit the kingdom. Don't think that you are going to get the kingdom with this body. In the wink of an eye, the body will turn into light. This is Corinthians. How many people who practice Christianity understand uh, the light body as explained by Paul? not even 0.0001%. Even the people who believe that uh, there is going to be a second coming, they have no idea of what the light body is. But here is Paul very clearly saying that in the wink of an eye, the body will turn into light. That is the kingdom. That is how long it takes to turn the body into light. 
and we have in world religions many 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 messiahs prophets belonging to the ancient traditions who have turned their body into light and left the world we even go to the Judaism Eliyahu who came to be called who is also called Elijah <clears throat> He turned his body into light. Eliyahu gave his powers to Elijah, his the disciple him he met, and then to, and then just flew away. So we have in the Egyptian tradition reference to the light body. Almost all religious traditions have reference to the light body as the ultimate body. and what about the hindu tradition within the hindu tradition there is a renegade group of radicals called the siddhas particularly the tamil siddhas i belong to that tradition of the tamil siddhas the tamil siddhas say that you don't have to go and pray to god you have to pray to yourself because you are god you are the light within them. and then they created a science of the light body their science is so vast you can attain light body through so many means the the siddhas said it can be through alchemy by you know purifying mercury and taking the mercury and then the body will turn into light that's the alchemical process <coughs> or you can take some herbs light body herbs i will talk about it uh, <clears throat> when we move on and that can help you to change the body because everything fundamentally boils down to the chemistry now people live without thyroid without pituitary because what they do is just they replace uh, the pituitary and the thyroid with chemicals they produce so everything boils down to chemi- uh, chemicals so they said the chemicals are available in the herbs take them and then they will change the body into light so they are scientists so the light body again again i want to uh, bring it to your attention is not a concept of the wall it's a very very practical thing you need the light body because the light body is your real body is the highest intelligence the light body gives you the highest intelligence and with that high, highest intelligence you can do anything and everything that you want to do so that is uh, why you need to have a light body you just need to have a light body not just to disappear into another dimension not simply for that yes that is really the goal here but then there are a lot of by products that come will come out of the light body the by products is the ability to know everything i gave you the example of jay krishna murthy who knew ahead of time that uh, indra gandhi was going to be shot dead by her own body guard so where does that knowledge comes from it comes from your light body not from your language brain which is based on uh, sustained by sugar if the sugar supply stops if the oxygen stops in the brain you will be you will not be able to think you will be dead brain dead but then the light body that is within you will never disintegrate that is the that is the real body that you have so by gaining a light body you are not don't think that you are going to lose everything you are going to lose your house you are going to be a recluse you are going to be an ascetic and not interested in this life by gaining a light body you will be more conscious then life will not be a struggle it will be a struggle as long as you are caught up in the logic as long as you are caught up in uh, cause and effect 
all these things belong to the material reality. So those of you who want to uh, pursue the light body path should know that even though you may not want the light body or you may not be able to connect to what this uh, concept of turning the body into light in, in a realistic way or in an uh, um, authentic way, don't worry about it. Just at least look at it from the perspective of gaining more consciousness or identifying yourself not with this uh, material body, which is an illusion. So what is real is that you are light. And if you can really live that reality, then you can create business at the speed of light. This is from Bill Gates. Why all these people who are uh, extremely successful in the material plane, um, uh, happen to be what they are, it is because they live in the light body. Otherwise they wouldn't, wouldn't be able to conceive of a concept like uh, as the business at the speed of light. At the speed of light, that's how he grew. Within 15 years or so, he became the richest man of the world. So don't think that Bill Bill Gates doesn't care about <clears throat> the light body, he does. In fact, I have read a conversation between him and, and Kutzwell in that book called uh, The Singularity Here, where uh, Kutzwell proposes the light body concept and then he, he agrees with it. Yes, it is possible through science. But what I am saying is, yes, it, I, I agree with science, I agree with science, science is such beautiful things uh, to offer. I'm able to now globally uh, um, get in touch with my people through this Google Hangout, and that is science. But science has limitation. It is useful, but it has limitation. You have to get beyond the limitations in the wink of an eye the body will turn into light. That will happen through another process. Now why do we have to have a light body? I just told you the reason. That we don't have to suffer because we are stuck in the body. Because the body is subjected to diseases, aches and pains, disappointments and emotional uh, uh, imbalance, all these things are due to this uh, blood and uh, flesh and blood body. But if you have a light body, there is no question for uh, diseases or even death or pain. So when can we really be truly, truly libera liberated? When there is going to be peace in this world, only when we have become Evolve. It's a matter of evolution. Light body is a matter of evolution. And it is supported by our science too. So what is the method for our light body? And here I want to talk about Einstein and apply Einstein's concept. Uh, e equals mc squared to the light body. And again, try thinking about Einstein, he was very clear about the limitation of the physical body and the physical understanding. He very clearly said, don't think that I'm a very brainy person. That whatever happened to me or whatever I was able to discover, it was through, due to something that happened to me, intuition. Not through rational process, not through rational process. He repeated it many times in many of his writings. Something happened and I, I really uh, was able to find this great equation. That's why he said, where science ends, their religion begins. But what we did, what did we do? When Einstein died, his, uh, the guy, the doctor who did that autopsy on him, uh, uh, he stole his brain and uh, he cut it into pieces and then they were trying to find out 
uh, how his brain was different from other people's brain, they couldn't find anything. Because the problem is, it's not simply in the brain. We are only seeing the physical brain. I will come back to it, uh, you know, during the course of this presentation many times. There is an astral brain. The yogis were concerned with our astral brain. The astral brain is similar to this uh, physical brain, but much more powerful because it's not limited. In fact, the physical brain gets its support and nourishment uh, from the astral brain, which is the light the light body brain. Now let me go back to the equation that uh, Einstein uh, came up with. E equals mc squared. Energy is just matter multiplied by the square of light. Now here the body is matter and you have to bring on to it the square of light. It has to vibrate at the speed of the square of light. And if it begins to vibrate at that level, then it becomes a light body. So all that we need to do is just bring more and more and more and more light because the light vibrates at a great speed, 186,000 miles per second. And that's the square of it, this tremendous amount of uh, infinite amount of vibration. If you can bring that kind of vibration into your physical body, that physical body will disappear. And then it will be just the light body or the energy body. So it is just energy transformation. Matter becomes energy and uh, energy becomes matter. That's the equation is about. Now we are matter. And then this matter has to be turned into light. So what is ap applicable in the physical world is also applicable within our body. And that is what the, the Tamil Siddhas are concerned about. They said human beings are suffering because of wrong identity with the physical body. And our whole civilization is dependent on identity with the physical body and not focusing our attention on evolution. Because we say that everybody is, uh, is born and everybody is dead and that is quite natural and then you don't have to worry about uh, transforming the body. It's an old concept. It doesn't make any sense. We have to collectively change this concept. And we fall a victim to concepts like this many, many times, even within science. When Dalton came up with his atomic theory, he said, atom is indivisible. Is it true now? No, it's obsolete. And then Newton came. Newton's mechanics is still valid. But he said, the time is absolute. Space is absolute. And uh, he has been disproved. Time is not an absolute. Time is relative. Space is not absolute. It's relative. So even scientific concepts do not hold water forever. They change. Just look at people who are going to live. Hundred years from now, what are they going to talk about? Uh, think about our scientists and our science. They will think that we are very primitive people. Our science is very primitive. They will laugh at us. That's going to happen. They are going to outdate all our science, all our medicine, all, all the things that we have, we are very proud of in our contemporary world. So we have to look beyond into an absolute reality. Is there an absolute reality? Yes, there is one. But that is beyond language. That is not subject to material corruption. That's why Paul was right. This kingdom will not be inherited by this corruption. In the wink of an eye, the body has to turn into light. I wish the people who follow Christianity will truly understand the meaning of it. This is the true meaning of Christ's teaching.
That's why he, the Last Supper, he just dismantled his body, you know, symbolically by uh, breaking the bread and giving uh, to the disciples. This is my body, eat it. You don't want to come back into this body and get lost and then your whole life has been spent in ignorance and illusion. And then he gave a cup of wine and then he said, this is, drink it, this is my blood. And this is a great technology. But Christ did was a great technology. It's a surrogate kind of technology. And uh, we, we, we use it in sciences also. I'm not going to go into that because that's not going to be uh, the agenda for my talk. So, but what Christ meant was liberation, the absolute body, the light body. And he himself demonstrated by resurrecting and then appearing before the, his disciples and others. This is it. This is the body. And that is the reality. And that is how, where we have to put all our energy, research and everything. That's, I'm going to be talking about it all the time because I have incarnated just only for one purpose, that is the evolution of humanity. Just giving you a billion dollar is not going to save you from pain, is not going to save you from aging, is not going to save you from death. We know uh, how uh, you know, Steve Jobs, with all his billions, had to suffer but if you have the light body, then there is no suffering. So humanity has to make it as its only goal, the, you know, the only uh, ideal, long-lasting goal, the light body. You, you, you know, if you think, no, it's not going to happen, it will take a long time to happen, you know, will I still be benefited? Yes, there are a lot of benefits that will accrue while you are developing the body, because you are, get, you are developing the speed of vibration within you. When you become, uh, when you begin to vibrate at a tremendous speed, then you will see the reality changes. It is like watching a fan, the fan begins to rotate and rotate. When it is stationary, you see the matter. When it begins to, uh, you know, speed up and speed up and speed up, we don't see it, it disappears, the same way is the body. 